Hi, thanks for tuning into this session on zero config Svelte websites. My name is Jim Fisk, and I'm the creator of a free and open source framework called Plenty that makes creating Svelte websites as easy as possible. I started Plenty because I'd always admire the speed and simplicity of other static site generators. And I want to bring that consistency and performance together with the power of a reactive front-end library like Svelte. Plenty takes a slightly different approach to building web apps than other Svelte frameworks you might be used to. First of all, we cut out the bundler to make the build process as fast as possible. So you won't find Webpack or Rollup configuration anywhere in the project. Instead, we take an approach similar to Snowpack that takes advantage of ESM imports, and we create our own purpose-built tool called GoPack to cut out even more time from this conversion process. Another thing you might find surprising is that you don't need Node.js or NPM installed on your computer to run Plenty. Our project is built with a Go backend, so we hit the V8 engine directly to compile the Svelte components. This should streamline your project setup and save you some versioning headaches when you're managing different environments across your team. We make these tools optional, so we don't prevent you from using Node.js for your builds if you prefer, or managing individual NPM packages if your project requires it. Since Plenty is the only dependency you need, installation is pretty straightforward though. You can simply download the binary from the releases tab on GitHub, or you can use one of the supported package managers, including Homebrew, Snapcraft, and Scoop. A new Plenty project is quick to set up using the command line tool. You can easily create scaffolding for your site and automate repetitive tasks. There's also a lightweight web server included that automatically watches your files for changes and makes your local development process easier. Out of the box, Plenty creates HTML fallbacks for every route. This helps search engines index your site to increase your ranking in the results. It also improves the experience for people using screen reader technology to navigate your site. Additionally, it makes loading of your website really fast. So Plenty hydrates your site into a single page application with full reactive components and client-side routing already set up. It's automatically connected to a JSON data source so you can separate your content from your layout in an easy to understand folder structure that makes you feel like you're creating a simple HTML website again. We've built an injectable system that lets you override core files, like if you wanna customize things like routing, default props, and hydration. I anticipate most people won't need to touch this, but it's there for folks who like to tinker. The core files are hidden by default to reduce the cognitive load it takes to start a new project. And it also gives you the benefit of automatic updates across your projects as soon as you wanna to move to a newer version of Plenty. I'm hoping you find Plenty in an empowering way to create dynamic web experiences without having to manage complex tools or configuration. The default starter should build in less than half a second, so you might be so productive you forget to check Twitter. That's enough talk though. I think the best way is to see if this is something you like by getting into a project. So let's hop right in. Okay, let's get started by taking a look at a brand new Plenty site. I already have Plenty installed, so I'm gonna come over here to my terminal and I'll go to my desktop first and then run the command Plenty New Site SSS. So this stands for Svelte Summit Site. So that created site scaffolding. So if I list my files here, you can see that we have an SSS folder. If I were to go inside this SSS folder, I can open this now inside of my text editor. So I'm using VS Codium. Now we can see the structure of our site here. There are some folders that are included by default. We have an assets folder here. This folder is designed to keep all your static assets. Things like images and videos go in here. By default, we have a favicon and we have a logo for our site. Then there's a content folder. This is where the structure for all our data lives. Now we have a couple of content types in here. We have a blog content type and we have a pages content type. And then we have a single content type called index.json. Inside these individual content type folders, there are different pages. So we have a post1.json and a post2.json. In pages, a similar thing. We have contact and about. And each one of these content files corresponds to a different route on our website. So we'll have a different end node for each one of these pieces of content. Now, there's also this concept of layouts. This is where the structure of your site comes from. You can think of this as the templates or the HTML for your site. And inside here, we've broken this up into a couple of logical steps. So we have our global, which is where our HTML wrapper comes in play. We have our head for some metadata, and we also have a nav and a footer. And then we have a really important folder called content. Now this corresponds to each one of the content sources that you saw previously. So we have blog, we have pages, and we have this single content type called index. We also have an additional content type that didn't have a data source called 404. Now it's okay to have templates in this file that do not have data sources. Just keep in mind that they won't be fed any individual content from those JSON files. And we also have a components folder here, which is for reusable components that you can use across your site. For instance, we have a grid, so we use this to display different blog posts on our homepage, but you could use it for other things as well. And of course, moving beyond the layouts, we have some standard things like node modules. These are NPM packages. We have a git ignore file. 
We have a package.json for managing our node modules. And then we have a site-wide configuration file called plenty.json. Before we go and make any changes, let's actually just open up a terminal inside of this project here. And let's run a new command, plenty serve. And this will build our site and start up our local web server. So if we grab this URL here, and I can come to Firefox and open up a new private window, paste that in, and now you can see our starter website. When navigating the site, notice that at the bottom of every one of these pages, there's actually a template reference. So for instance, if you go to a blog page, you'll see that this is the blog template and you can copy that by clicking this button. Or if you were to go to a regular page, you can see that we have a different template here reference for about and contact. So I can actually come here, copy any one of these templates, and then go back over my code editor, hit control P to search the file and then paste that in there and open up that specific template to see how it's constructed. So we can change the format of this page by editing it. So I'm gonna come down here and add a link and I'll actually add a broken link in order to demonstrate the 404 behavior. So let's call this fake, it's a fake path, it does not exist on the site. And we'll just name this broken link. And if we save that, we'll rebuild the site down here in our local web server. And if we come back over here and reload our site, you'll see that we now have a broken link. Now, if we were to click on this link, it takes us to a 404 page automatically. Now let's take a look at this 404 page, how it's being constructed on the back end here. So we have this layout content 404.svelte file, and you can see we've hard coded this information into this file. Now we could easily add a data source for this page so we could come to content and inside our content folder, we could create a new file called 404.json. And in 404.json, we could add any data structure we'd like. So for instance, we could say title, this, is the new 404. We could save that and I could come back to our 404 page. And instead of using this automatic title here, we could come up here and we could add a script tag. And then in order to get access to that variable, you would just write export let title. Now title just matches the key you put into your data structure over here. This could be anything. For instance, we could say custom title save that and over here we would just reference custom title and then down here we could just use that variable in our template so we could come here and change this to custom title and save that and then if we go to our website and reload the 404 page you'll see that we get the server rendered 404 page so that was the client rendered 404 page so let's come back to our about page and then reload our about page and if we click the broken link one more time, you'll see that this is the new 404 title comes in. You also see that a new content page has been added since we have a data source now. So that is showing that it has its own end node. And because we've added that, you could actually also go to that node directly by going 404 and you get the same page here. Now, that's one of the nice things about not adding it as a content source because we can actually remove this from the data source completely and just have this not as an end node, but also have it as a behavior when you cannot find the actual page you're looking for. So let's come back over here to our text editor. Let's actually just remove this content source here. And then we'll have to come back to our template here and let's get rid of this information and let's just hard code this back in here. Let's demonstrate how to add a new content type. Let's open up a new terminal down here so we can use the plenty command line tool. And notice now that we have only two content types here. We have blog and pages and then we have an individual content type called index, but we could create a new one. So we could say plenty new type and we can name it any type that we want. For instance, we could just have a new type called cars. And if we put this command in there, you'll notice that it says that it created a new content source and a new layout. So in our content source, we have a new folder called cars and that has a blueprint.json file in here. Now this file is just a specifically named file that helps define the data structure for this content type. It's used for things like auto generating new pages and working with a get back CMS in order to do content editing. But you'll also notice over here under our layout content folder, we also have a cars.svelte file. Now these are basically blank right now, so you're not gonna see too much difference on the front end of the website at this moment. But as soon as you start adding files in here, you'll start to notice the difference. So let's come up to cars and let's add a new file. And we'll just call this one honda.json. And let's add another file. We'll call this one ford.json and a new file and let's call this one tesla.json. Now, if we had defined our structure in our blueprint.json previously, it would be easier to copy and replicate 
these files to have the same data structure. But we'll just do it manually since this is a simple enough example. Inside these JSON files, you can define whatever data structure you'd like. And actually, these data structures between these JSON files and the same content type don't even need to be exactly the same. Although, if you have any differentiation between them, you need to account for it in your template or else you'll get errors. Let's just make them pretty consistent at this point. So inside one of these files, I'm going to create a new data structure. And inside here, I'll say name. And I'll just say Tesla. And I'll say type. And we'll just say electric speed be fast and price expensive. So you can tell I know a lot about cars by the way I described this. So save that. And then I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to put this into these other ones here. These are just made up, so I don't know if Ford or Honda's more affordable or anything like that. These are just made up values, so don't be upset with me. Okay, so we've added those different nodes. Now, if we were to go to our site, you'll notice something here. If I reload this, and let me go to a homepage and just reload. So we have the Honda, Tesla, and the Ford pages down here in our all content section. But if you were to go to any of these, for instance, let's go to Tesla, you'll notice that it's a completely blank page. That's because the template over here is still blank. If I were to go to our cars.svelte page, it's completely blank. Now, I could just add some information here. So I could add an H1 and just say cars page and save this. And if I were to come back here and reload, you can see that we get the cars page. But that's not very helpful because we want to pull the information out from our data source. So let's come back over here. We know we have a pretty consistent data source. They all have these four keys here. So we know we can work with those pretty easily. Let's come back up to the top of our template and let's just define a script tag. And in this, let's get those variables by export let. And then we have name type speed price. So we can do name type speed price. And then we can start using those variables in our template. So let's come down here. Let's change this to name. And then we could even do something like an unordered list here. And each one of the list items could be these values. So we could say type is type and if we save that and come over so we should be able to get different information about these different cars so we can go Honda we can go Tesla we can go Ford and you have all the different information there and it's just kind of working without having to set up too much. We didn't really have to worry about the routing for these individual pages. We didn't have to really worry about using specific keys for the data structure and then pulling the values into our template was as simple as referencing the keys that we defined in our data structure. Also keep in mind you have some nice goodies out of the box here. So for instance, writable stores work out of the box. So you can do things like decrement or increment counters and these are defined in different components. So if you were to come over here to our site to see here in our components, we have the incrementer and the decrementer and those keep state consistent between them, even though they're defined separately. So we have over here in our scripts folder, a little helper script called stores.svelte and that just defines a writable store and defines the count to zero. And then those components can manage them separately. We also have the concept of dynamic components. So for instance, if we were to take a look at our index.svelte file, and we came down to the bottom. We're checking to see if any components are available and then we're looping through those components and just loading them if they exist. And if you were to look over here at the data source for that, you could see in our index.json file, we have this section called components. And then we say we want the template component that corresponds over here to this template.svelte file. But we could define any component we want and you don't have to actually then go and import it specifically in your index.svelte file. So you'll notice in here, we don't import the template component anywhere. We just actually load it dynamically. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with Plenty without doing too much customization to it. So I definitely suggest starting up the default starter like we did in this video and playing around and just trying to discover how some of this stuff is set up. And if you have any questions, of course, go to our GitHub and just open an issue and we're happy to discuss them with you. Thanks again for tuning into this session. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Plenty and maybe you're excited to try it in your own projects. If you wanna help our project out, please just go to the GitHub page, that's github.com forward slash Plentico and just give the project a star. It really helps with our motivation to keep working on the project. Now, I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions and have a great rest of your day. Thanks and take care.